What does it mean to be a Newfoundlander? Today on All About Canadian Books, author Donna Morrissey will tell us. But before we talk to Donna, if you love books and the stories behind them, please hit that subscribe button. Interviews are posted Tuesdays and Thursdays, the second and fourth week of every month. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's guest is the lovely Donna Morrissey. Donna Morrissey is an award-winning, best-selling author and educator who says it was her good fortune to have been born and raised in an output of 12 houses and where they were only allowed to talk to six of those. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Donna. Thank you. And I should correct, there are six up here, but there's six more down there. <laughs> I think all told that adds up to 20 in my, uh, with my math. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so excited to have Donna here because we are going to talk about her. I think there it is there, her memoir, Pluck, and it is published by Penguin Canada. And it's a memoir of a Newfoundland childhood and the ruckus, terrible, amazing journey to becoming a novelist. So welcome, Donna. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited that you're back. Thank you, Crystal. It's great to be here. <laughs> so, Donna, releasing a memoir, like releasing a novel is nothing new to you. You've done this many times before, but this time... It's your memoir. It's deeply personal. You talk about mental illness, death, despair. So how was it for you this time releasing something so personal? It was a different kettle of fish, for sure. <laughs> I, I, uh, fiction was uh, relatively easy in the sense that, you know, you had a character carrying mm -hmm. all of the emotions for you. Uh, all of my novels have been um, based or inspired by my life story, you know, my family, mm -hmm. my friends. <clears throat> and yeah, so when you write fiction, you know, you have these characters, they're a buffer between you and the, and the raw emotion. Uh, so this time there was no buffer, there was just me uh, carrying it. And uh, yeah, cut a little close to the bone at times, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I I absolutely loved it. And I mean, the whole time you could hear your voice. It was like you were sitting in the room talking to me. I just thought it was great. <laughs> the other thing, Donna, that I'm always interested in with writers is, is their process of starting, especially with the memoir. And you start with the death of baby Paul or baby ball, as you call him. Um, what made you decide to start there? I, I started with death because it was the first memory that I had mm. that impacted me to the point where the entire saga was in, in imagery in my mind. And, uh, and given how I knew it was going to end in death, you know, I, I just bookended the entire story within, within that. And death, of course, is prominent throughout mm -hmm. the entire memoir, death and uh, grief and survival, hope yes. and joy too, yes. Yes, yes. Um, and another thing as well that really struck me, me with your novel is of course the love of where you're from, you know, Upper Beaches and Newfoundland. What, what does it mean to be a Newfoundlander to you? I don't know how it would be to not be a Newfoundlander yeah. <laughs> because I've never really been able to leave that part of me behind, nor would I want to. Yes. It's, um, it, you know, I, I sometimes meet people who, you know, are army brats, as they call themselves, or people that move around a lot. And, uh, and I ask them where they're from and then they shrug and, uh, it is so evident to me where you're from. <laughs> Not only am I from Newfoundland, I'm from the beaches in Newfoundland. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it is so defined in my psyche as home <laughs> where everything, everything grew out of there. It was a cradle for everything that I am and, mm -hmm. uh, and my family that 
There's just no question. There's no doubt. I was not no. I'm a Canadian. Of course, I'm a Canadian. But you know, I'm a Bay girl from the beaches from Newfoundland, <laughs> Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, of course, with your memoir and and your books, as you were just saying, you know, so much of what you write is inspired by what you know. And oh my gosh, Donna May, <laughs> can I just say May? I. Oh, her story just really pulled at my heartstrings. So I wanted to ask you, um, well, is May still around? I guess would be. So so back in the day when her story was shared, what did what did May have to say? Because it is such an honor to inspire someone the way she inspired you. May never would have understood that, you know, uh, her reality was so distant from mine. And and even back then, I I had no notion of who I was in terms of the literary world. I hadn't started writing at that point. I started writing after I left Newfoundland, basically. um, And and she was gone, you know, she was gone. Yeah. Oh, she she, 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 was just, this just, just, person that grew and grew and grew within my psyche I, I had no idea how much she impacted me until I started writing the old story the deception of Libby Higgs was about May it wasn't her reality mm-hmm. huge chunks of it were that she, as she had told it to me and so she inspired that novel and she also inspired Kit's Law which yes started out to be her story but ended up being you know something different but uh, yeah. And the other interesting thing as well with writing a novel and part of your process is, you know, you said that it's your memory as best as you can rec- recollect it. Yes. And, yeah. and you yeah. also spoke with family members about about it as well. So what was that process like writing your memoir, but also integrating your family into it? Well, it's difficult to do a memoir without family, and uh, <laughs> uh, given how they make up who we are, um, it, it's challenging in the sense that when you write a memoir, you're taking control of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's how you see it, how you were in there, and that may not always measure up to how others saw it. In my family, um, I will, I get, again, I'm blessed because I have this wonderful family. Yes. And I actually chatted with my brother the other night and he just finished reading the memoir and um, he had a lot of regrets about the fact that he didn't play a more active role uh, towards the end of in our mother's life. And he based it on his reading of Pluck and Go. <laughs> if I'd written the story, it would have been all about you, all about your memories of mom and what you did and how you did it. You you can't, you know, I would be on the outside looking in. You know, <laughs> So uh, is, is knowing that and is preparing your family for that, that this is your story. It is not theirs. It is not their money. It is your story. And you will be owning this. And uh, I, I think with that kind of preparation, they have more understanding of what you're doing. Yeah. Do uh, Did it make um, any of your siblings want to write their memoir too or...? They won't. <laughs> yeah, you're the writer. <laughs> the very fact you will leave all the writing for me. <laughs> my sister sings, my other sister bakes, my brothers, God, they're all rich in their lives and what they do and their families. No, they don't want my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Donna, that was another thing. I mean, certainly the love of family came through. And I also thought, oh, my gosh, how hard your family works. <gasps> yeah, we're a family of workers, there's no doubt. And, I, and I, somebody asked me the question the other day, what is the takeaway from writing this novel? And, uh, and I had to say that it was the amazing family that I have. The fact that, you know, they all up and moved when our mom got sick. They just yeah. left everything their homes their jobs everything and Edmonton other parts of the country you know New Brunswick Toronto and just like that they moved everything and they came to Halifax with you know but nothing except a bit of a bank account not much of that and uh 
and, and we all built from there and we built it all around our mom's illness and um yeah that is that's pretty incredible it's it's very incredible very incredible such love and yeah oh, it's it was a really wonderful book and certainly inspiring because you also talk so much about mental illness and and coping and um have you had any any people reach out to you donna because you know about that factor yes i have i have had so much of that and uh but what's more interesting was the fact that it, it was mostly about their daughters or their sons or their husbands or their wives. Mm -hmm. So there were people writing in saying, the number one, I illuminated for them more of the that condition of anxieties or chronic anxieties mm -hmm. of, of uh, you know, the anxiety disorder. And so I had helped them understand where their loved ones was and mm -hmm. uh, and to connect with it more so uh, interestingly i've got more of that than from people themselves that were suffering but i've had my fair share of those as well and may god bless all of us you know because yes. it's a very very challenging place to be but yes. it's for it takes fortitude you know mental courage and mental strength to get up every morning and to challenge that and to walk that path because that's how you get through it by walking mm -hmm. yeah absolutely well, I mean, uh, certainly as a as a reader, uh, thank you, thank you for sharing that. That's that's brave. That's, thank you, thank you, really, really brave. And um, I'm just gonna hold this up again for everyone because it is almost Christmas time, and <laughs> this is a great stocking stuffer. So, <laughs> Donna. A big thank you for being a guest on All About Canadian Books and coming on to talk about your memoir. And be actually, before I do say totally goodbye to you, I'd love to know, uh, what are you working on? I just actually sent out a second memoir. This one's all about my dad. And yeah. uh, I still haven't run out of stories. And I am now editing a novel for release, maybe within the next year. I'm not sure. But um yeah so busy <laughs> yay <laughs> well we'll look forward to that but thank you so much and um happy christmas thank you and and to you thank and you to everybody yes Bye. yes and to our viewers thank you for watching and uh happy holidays <laughs>